This episode of Real Estate Real World is brought to you by Lion Desk CRM. Discover why so many people have already made the brilliant decision to switch to Lion Desk. With over 100 integrations and video, email, and texting, Lion Desk isn't just a CRM. It's everything you'll ever need in a great follow-up system. Learn why thousands of real estate professionals have already made the switch by visiting them today at liondesk.com. Use the code REALWORLD and get 50% off your first two months. No credit card is even needed to get started today. Welcome to Real Estate Real World where we talk to the movers, shakers, and leaders that are getting it done right now in the real estate industry and beyond. Your host is Marguerite Crispillo, and she started this podcast simply to talk to cool people about what's really happening in this crazy roller coaster ride of real estate. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and stay up to date on the newest stuff by adding yourself to the list at www.realestaterealworld.com. Now your host, Marguerite Crispillo. Good morning, everybody. This is Marguerite Crispillo here with Real Estate Real World, where you get to hear all the great stuff about what's going on in the real estate industry right now. I'm very honored today to have a great guest. Nicole Mickle was referred to me by my good friend Randy Toby, who we just love over there at Realty Commander. And he said, you have got to talk to this gal. (laughs) So we're thrilled to have her on the show today. Let me read a little bit about her. So Nicole says her passion lies in helping people with their real estate transactions so they can get the most out of their investment and move on to the next chapter in their lives. With a 21-year career in this business, mortgage broker, real estate transaction coordinator, loan officer, as well as running a successful mobile notary closing company, She knows that a real estate transaction has many key players and lots of moving parts, as we all know, right? And she knows them inside out, frankly. From the day your house is listed until the minute the keys are handed over to the new owner at the closing table, she knows what happens. As a real estate agent, she wants to give her clients a great experience and prides herself on having a different outlook and approach to real estate. She has developed a simple system for open communication with her clients, which ensures that they are never in the dark. A big frustration of clients, right? She educates you about the general process and lets you know what to expect every step of the way. If you're looking to move to Orlando, be sure to give Nicole a call. If you want to live there and know more about the different neighborhoods or subdivisions, there's nothing like working with someone who lives here and knows the area. Well, welcome to the show, Nicole. Welcome! Yes, we're excited to have you here today. This has been, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So, 21 years, you're almost uh, as been long as me. I've been 23 <laughs> years, so, uh, but I didn't do all the stuff you did. I did loans for about a year and decided that loans were not for me. I hated it and uh, got into the real estate side and never really looked back. So, how did you get into this? What did you do in your previous life? How did you even get into the real estate industry? Well, I was always drawn to finance because I had a love of mark, um, math, and that love of math kind of turned into go to college, get a degree in economics because I love you know market research and it was just always interesting to me. So I was like, I'll just do that till I figure it out. And I was like, oh, a great job at the bank, that'd be a good idea. Let me go to the bank, um, get this awesome job, and live happily ever after. Well, of course, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> And the bank had a lot of rules and regulations, and we didn't color outside of the lines, and I like to color outside of the lines all the time. So I received a call from a mortgage person, and he said, hey, we would love for you to come over here and join our team. And I'm like, oh, no, my mom is going to kill me because I'm still like 20-something years old. I can't leave the bank this promising career and... Long of the short was he said, okay, can you start next week? I was like, yep. I'm <laughs> right. And I, that way I kind of live on the edge. So oh, I live God. on the edge through my career. And I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. Ten years into that, market crashed, and some transitions started to happen. Mm, yeah. And that's well, you how guys I got hit hard in Florida. Florida. 
You guys got hit hard in Florida, just like we did in California. Yes, and I never... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> got to turn off your email. I'm trying to do that. Oh, my <laughs> God. Miss Tech Savvy can't get her email notifications to stop. What the heck is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We're all used to it. Okay, so yeah, so that was the that was the biggest thing for me. Um, was you know transitioning, and I'm glad I'm a person who can kind of go with the flow because that actually enabled me to kind of open my mind, my horizons, and I made contacts over the years. And they said, "Hey, I would love for you to come be a transaction coordinator for us in our office." And I was like, "Oh, okay, that'd be cool." Um, what a, what the heck is that? And they're like, "We need you to organize stuff." I'm like, "Well, I'm OCD. I can organize." And, <laughs> Let me go in here because I was also a processor for my own mortgage files, and that was something that's really detailed, too. So I was like, how hard can real estate be? Well, it was really interesting, a <laughs> little different than what I was accustomed to, and um, putting a file together and understanding certain things that when people were kind of fluffing on a deal or when the bank was doing some things on a short sale, it just, I mean, one thing rolled into another, another attorney said, hey, come work for us. We know you could kill it over here. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not doing anything else. So I'll go help you guys out. And that's how I became a real estate agent because they wanted me to get my license in the event I had to have a conversation because they knew I understood too much and they wanted to cover me for liabilities. Okay. So the okay. initial thought process was never to be a real estate agent. It was just a, kind of like a CYA. And um, once I got caught up in it and clients were like, we need help, you're the only one calling us back. We, you know, I did this 24 seven literally for three years. And that's how I became a real estate agent because I knew that short sales were dwindling and we were going more into a traditional market so after re relationships with the hedge funds, investors, working with them in Orlando, I became this traditional person, but I didn't have any mentorship. I kind of just did it on my own. And a lot of my previous uh, um, relationships were kind of gone because they had left the industry. Right. So that's when I turned to social media. And um, I found this amazing app called Instagram. And yes. that's what changed the game. Yeah, and I love Instagram, and we're going to definitely post a link. Your Instagram is I Orlando Real Estate, right, on Instagram? Yeah. Yes, that's me. And she has 5,176 followers. Awesome. And does some really cool, wow, you got some really cool stuff on Instagram. So if you guys are interested, be sure to follow her because she does some really pretty amazing stuff. So here's my question then a little bit about, before we get into Instagram, because I want to talk more about that, but because of your varied experience, like working in all these little different sections, if you will, of the real estate industry, what has really been like your biggest frustration? What is the one thing you'd love to really see change in the industry? I would love to see um, a higher standard for entry into being coming a real estate agent. I think they just allow us. This is me speaking for Florida only, Orlando. We have so many agents here that it's starting to do harm within the industry. And this is where you have all of these complaints about instant offers with Zillow um, because consumers are tired of being jerked around. And that's what I keep hearing from people that may meet me on the third go round with another agent and they're like, Nicole, where were you in the beginning? And it's like, it's so much junk to get filtered through. So I think we're hurting ourselves as an industry more so than any of these other startups that's coming into the game. Well, don't you think though, so I have a couple little different opinions on this, similar but different in that, yes, I think the barrier to entry should be better. But more importantly than that, I think that the brokers have to take some responsibility for actually training, right? Like I think back to when I got into real estate. Here's my history. I got into real estate. I went to work as an assist assistant for a top agent. His phone would ring off the hook and I'd say, Luigi, these people want to see houses. And he'd say, well, go show them houses. I'm like, okay. So I'd drive out there and show them houses. I had no clue what I was doing. I'd never, ever shown a house, right? And then mm -hmm. I'd call him up, I'd say, hey, they want to write offers. He'd like, well, write an offer. It's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to write an offer. You know, like I had no idea. I'd never written an offer. And so, you know, I am a, 
diligent, so I figured it out, right? I sat down, and luckily, thank God, back then, our contracts were only four pages long. But, you know, I figured out how to write the contract, but I literally got thrown into the deep end of the pool. I mean, I had no, zero training, zero responsibility, zero accountability, and unfortunately, I think that that is more the norm than not the norm. Correct. Because I, even I a college agree. degree is not going to make you a great real yeah. estate agent. What's and going to I, make you a great yeah. real estate agent is understanding the process and what needs to happen and somebody actually holding your hand for a bit. Like, you know, some industries like electricians, they have like an apprentice and a journeyman, right? Absolutely. And you have to work as an apprentice for a certain period of time or a certain number of jobs or something like that. We don't have that as a real estate industry. We really don't. Some companies do, but very... Very small percentage. Would you not agree? Correct. And I am meeting people through um, social media that are in different markets. And it's interesting their approach on how they develop agents in other states. And I think that's how come when people relocate to Florida, they're just like really shocked at how unique our style is here. It's kind of like freestyle airbrushing. Mm -hmm. And you, I would agree with you on that. The brokers, yes, should have, you know, take more of a responsibility in building a business, educating these agents, but also I think we should require them to do so. In the mortgage industry, that's one thing that I love. There was, a, there was enough regulation that it controlled things that people that didn't want to go ahead and do things the proper way, right. either you did them the proper way, you go to jail. Um, here in the real estate industry, if you find people who are not doing the proper way, it's like, just turn your head to it. Let's not talk about it. It's like a don't ask, don't tell type of concept. And I just think it's not, it's doing a disservice to the consumer, not to us. Yeah, I, not agree. Just us. I agree. Yeah, it's frustrating for sure. I mean, uh, you know, I know that even like some of the bigger companies who brag about what, that they're a, a straight training company. What they train on, what they train on, it's lead generation. They don't train on processes and systems. They teach you how to go get leads, how to cold call, how to door knock, how to, you know, they don't teach, okay, what parts of the transaction and what is really in the best interest of the client. Correct. And they also train to create bodies, almost like a MLM kind of concept, which I'm doing a showing. I have multiple showings. I don't need an agent coming to my, my showing to try to recruit me. Right. <laughs> you exactly. told me you had a buyer that was coming here. That's unethical to me. So why would I even want to join an organization that is encompassing that type of behavior style, which is upsetting to me as well. Right. When you could have said, hey, let's go out to coffee or something like that. But don't use the time frame of me representing my clients and using it as a tool to re recruit me because you see this as a potential opportunity. opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what, so what, with all your experience, again, what do you think has helped you become that better agent, has helped you really create a better experience for the consumer? Is it uh, just understanding the education part of it? Is it learning how to see through the eyes of your client? Yes. It's the me seeing through the eyes of the client because whenever something happens or whenever I'm presenting anything, even with a negotiation process, I want to understand from the perspective of the person on the other side of the table. So for the consumer, I'm always asking them, hey, at any time, let me know. Do you not understand something? Tell me the things that you previously had as a problem. What are the things you like? What are the things you didn't like? So it's always this back and forth conversation of what should I do better and what do you think um, you love about it? And those, I just consistently build and change from that process. And hopefully I, you know, create an experience that they're like, oh my God, I love Nicole. It's, it's the goal. Right, exactly. And, you know, to me, that's the best testimony, right? When you get somebody who comes back to you again or refers you or, yes. uh, you know, sends somebody your way, clearly you did a great job. And so let's uh, switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about Instagram. So how did you get, how did you really get connected with Instagram and, and how did you see it as a platform to express what you want to say? Um, I initially went into social media thinking it was going to be Facebook and then I was doing some reading um, on some like, you know, social media for dummies when I was pregnant with my son in 2006. And then, but the Instagram thing was, 
I did a couple posts because they're like, oh, everything is visual. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to sell houses. Like, how the hell am I going to get a client off of here? So I put up a couple. Um, I went to my first post, I believe, was some house um, pictures, pictures from the app house. Yeah, and yeah. I shared a couple um, interior design photos. But it was more of, oh, I just love this. My best friend and I, we have a love for interior design. We're all just, you know amateurs at this but um we always said oh look at this picture oh let me share this picture so i was like if we're interested in it maybe other people may be interested in it so i put a couple of them up and then i noticed that i got like five likes on the picture from people i never saw before i'm like <laughs> these aren't my friends like i don't even have my friends on this thing and then another picture went up and i started getting more likes and then i found out about hashtags and I was like, whoa, that like changed the game. So when I found out about the hashtag, it started to become like almost like a Rubik's Cube that I was trying to solve. And I started using those hashtags and I got 20 likes. And I was like, okay, I'm addicted now. I have to go ahead and see how many people just follow me. I'm like, oh, I got 15 likes today. <laughs> like, okay, like how the hell is that going to sell a house? So the guys I used to work with, they're like, Nicole, I've never heard of somebody selling a house on Instagram. I'm like, watch, you watch. So whenever somebody tells me I can't do something, then you're gonna trust you're me, wrong. I will do 24 hours a day <laughs> if I have to to prove you wrong. Uh, so those same guys came up to me and they like, okay, how did you get your first lead off of Instagram? $600,000 lead. Oh, my God. I still have the same email. I saved it from the client. She was relocating from Virginia down to Orlando, and she had already been assigned two agents. I won't say the brokerage's names, but they're pretty big here in Orlando. And she was just like, I cannot believe that people are not helping me. And I'm like, what's the problem? Wow. And she said, I was like, well, how did you, I saw the email. She says, it's a snow day here in Maryland. I want to come down to Orlando. I'm really frustrated. And I was told by agents to go and drive neighborhoods and call her back. I am in Maryland. How <laughs> so she started to go ahead. We, oh, sorry. She went ahead and she said, um, I saw one of your photos and I said, wow, I want a house, a kitchen that looks like that. And she wasn't actually on Instagram at the time. She Googled it. And my Instagram post came up through Google. And that's how we connected. Wow. From that photo, um, I helped her find the school for her daughter. Then we went had gone through that process. Then we found the house. And I had to get signed up with a relocation company. And I had never even done that to just get the deal from her. But she refused to use the other agents once we met in person. But from there, it continued. Oh, my God, I'm going to kill myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that over email. <laughs> no, that's how it all started. And then it eventually came as, um, I'm like, oh, well, who referred you when I get another client on the phone? And they're like, no one referred me. I'm like, well, how did you find me? And they're like, I saw your Instagram. I'm like, are you kidding me? And this was like I had five or 600 followers. It wasn't even a lot of followers. So oh when people goodness. go ahead and they want to have, oh, I want 50,000 followers, I was getting 50 likes per picture when, I, when she found me. But granted, it wasn't the beginning of the app, so it doesn't work the same. The algorithms are changing on it. But I still get clients from it all the time. But it's not just a raw lead from a client. Now I get referrals from other agents all over the U.S., who are sending me clients. So I'm a little, so help me understand a little bit about Instagram because I mean, I have an Instagram account, but mm -hmm. I don't have anywhere near those. And it's just my name. It's just Marguerite Crispillo. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, put a lot of pictures, personal stuff on there. But I'm confused how, first of all, they found it on Google. So do you mean that the Instagram pictures are searchable on Google? Is that because of yes. the hashtags you put on there? Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. So and the hashtags are really important on Instagram. Correct. It's more like your Google juice to find you. Oh, so okay. I'll hashtag my name on photos. I'll hashtag Orlando Real Estate. And those things start to become compounded. Once it compounds, then that's how people find you. Um, and it was amazing. When you Google your name and you're doing this the right way, I'll go in and clean up a couple agents. It's like a, it's fun for me. 
I'll get their phone and I become them. I talk to them about 15 minutes, ask them what they're into. And I'm like, post some photos of yourself sometimes, but the people are more drawn to the things that don't apply to you. They're just looking for what they want. They're not looking Uh, for you right now. Okay. They're just looking for the house. They're looking for the peace. They're looking for the mountains, whatever you have to offer in your area. Why do people move there? And I became them. So I almost kind of do back, backwards marketing. I don't know if it's a name for it. I become the consumer in my brain when I'm posting. Okay. So I'm looking at your I'm looking at your Instagram right now. So I'm going to ask a couple questions. Number one, like I'm looking at this house that you posted. Uh, it looks like a couple days ago, and yeah. it has coming soon. Under three hundred thousand in minutes from Lake. But you have contact me for more details, and then you give a hashtag with a number. Is that like a Text number? Oh, well, there you go. See, I don't know your zip codes out there. So there you go. And then I I see you add in the comments a whole bunch of other uh, hashtags. So you have hashtag Orlando real estate, hashtag real estate, medical city, new Mm -hmm. listing, Orlando homes, details, design, bonus room, walkable, community park, shopping location, and hospitals. So all these are hashtags that people wow I never even thought of some of those hashtags how did you come up with a lot of these different hashtags it's trial and error but here's the deal the reason why this is a big deal about this house um the comps in this area range from 500 to 1 million 10 minutes away from this home oh wow so to get a home under 300 in Orlando right now it's becoming a feat yeah here New- too as well I have to here in our market you can't even find anything under 300 See, exactly. So this home, newer construction, immaculate. So I don't want to show too many details to it up front because it's a coming soon. I want to give you a little bit to kind of take. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's a sip, just a little sip. You don't want to drink the whole cup. But with this, I know that the hospitals are around the corner. The name of the community that's like the 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 number two location, three location of one of the hot communities is Lake Nona. And that's where our medical research is being done right now. It's drawing in tons of doctors, nurses, and it's dubbed Medical City. So if you go onto the hashtag and you're looking for Medical City, you may not be looking for it, but you may find my home by mistake. Okay. All right. So, so that's so you're really kind of taking things that are important to that particular community or that market area and yeah. using those as hashtags because, again, somebody who might – it might be a doctor looking for a new hospital to work at. Correct. And then he shows up, he sees your Instagram with houses. Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. I never <laughs> even thought about it. And so what I also noticed on your Instagram is that it's really, like you said, it's not about you. I mean, you have your name here, but your yes. Instagram is I Orlando Real Estate, mm-hmm. right? And then you have in your bio the importance of relocation specialist, negotiator, right? The whole thing about your company. So it's pretty cool. Correct. I'm not a person that, um, I'm not like that extrovert that will want to just hang out with everybody and just show you, oh, I'm having drinks with friends. Oh, I'm just, that's not me. Right. So when this whole thing started, it only started with the photos and me pre- almost like a PowerPoint presentation of what I want to show the consumer. And what I would show them if I was going to show them homes, but more than a virtual showing concept, is what the Instagram developed from. And I think most real estate agents are told people want to know you. Yes, they do want to know you, but they don't want to know too much about you to the point you don't give them enough information. Well, but and and so I think they want to know you, but that's not initially why they're contacting you, right? Like, they, it's right. got to be something that's important to them. Like, I mean, you're lovely, Nicole, but I don't know. Like, uh, unless right. I was moving to Orlando, I don't really yeah. need to know information about you. But if I'm moving to Orlando, I want to know stuff about the area. And oh, by the way, Nicole is the best agent in the area. Then I would want to get to know you, right? Correct. I want to show you my value value proposition with, you know, almost 20,000 agents that's around here. What's, what's so different about me? I mean, it's a lot of us that are really good. It's a lot of us that are knowledgeable. Um, but maybe you don't want to connect with them. I don't know. It could be personality issues. But I want to go ahead and present to you first. And then it makes you want to call me. And then you get to know me that way on a personal level. 
So this is what I find fascinating because I've, I've talked a lot about this in the past is, you know, agents get all caught up in, and companies try to preach this about how important branding is, branding, branding, branding. And, you know, I, in my opinion, what I've always said is brand only matters when you got nothing else, right? And so uh, the truth is, is that you can brand Nicole all day long, but again, nobody really cares about you. Not that you're not lovely, right? But nobody really cares about you, Nicole. What they care about is that area and about the fact that, you know, it's a medical community or whatever those things are yeah. that are attracting them, the parks, the, you know, the the people in the area, the housing, the you know, what type of houses and what type of community events are available maybe for their kids or schools or stuff like that, right? Correct. And I asked them, how did you start your search? Not so much just for this one instance for me to be able to communicate with that client. That is for research for future clients. How did you start your search coming from North Dakota to come to Orlando? How did you start your search from Seattle? And they would say, well, initially I started with the schools. And I wanted to get a great school for my kids. Oh, okay. Well, how did you find Winter Garden? Well, they had A-rated schools. People raved about them on, you know, on different websites. The reviews were amazing. Then I started to go and look at the specific cities. So it, it's not just Orlando. They're looking at these little sub suburbs or smaller communities that they connect with in a lifestyle range. What's going to benefit their families? What's going to benefit them? And then that's how the marketing is developed now. It's totally different from when I first started. So, so that's kind of the same thing in our area. Like we, I'm actually in Roseville, but there's lots of little communities around us, right? And so focusing on those different ones. So what is, I've noticed that there, there have been a lot of changes with Instagram, especially since Facebook bought it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I know, it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> and uh, funny story, kind of quirky. So a good friend that I went to high school with, her son was one of the original starters of Instagram. And so... Wow. He was happy to sell out to Facebook because he made oh, a load of money. I, I, but, um, yeah, so he was pretty happy about that. So was, so was his mama. I said, you better make sure you get some of that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, the, but the bottom line is we've seen a lot of changes. The, most thing, the thing that I noticed the most that's frustrating to me is now they're changing the algorithm, algorithm so that you only see what – I don't know what they are. You're only – like I feel like I'm seeing the same thing over again. I'm not seeing the newest stuff on Instagram. Correct. Um, and you have to go in and that's the thing about when you follow people back, you want people who you want to follow people that you know are about to engage with you. Not just because they have 10,000 followers, because a lot of them are fake followers. So they've been already tagged as spam on Instagram anyway. So they won't even give you any kind of you know coverage. But you have to go in and actually engage with other sites that you're interested in and comment. Not like great job keep hustling oh my gosh so i call out people when they they come on my page and they put those things i'm like oops a little too much technology don't you think you know like so I call them out and, laugh. and um but that's the thing if you keep going in there you have to tell instagram i'm not interested in the crap you're showing to me i like this stuff then it starts to present you that stuff Okay, so if there's certain people that you like to follow, the best way to see more of their stuff is to like their posts and comment. Yes, yes. because okay. it's going off of what you're engaging. And that's the thing about social media that cracks me up when people say it doesn't work. They don't engage. You have to talk to people. Like if you're in a room, you would have to engage with that person or they're going to walk yeah. away from you and go talk to somebody else. It's kind of like going to a cocktail party and standing up against the wall, right? It's like... Yeah. It's like, did you talk to anybody? No one talked to me. Okay, so that's not going to be effective. <laughs> that's so true. That's so true. So who are some of your favorite people that you follow on Instagram? What kind of stuff do you like to see? Um, my thing is I like to see inspiration, motivational speakers, but like agents that's in the industry that have gone through the trenches and kind of tell their story of how the heck they know it they're doing um which would be kevion which is kevin sturvan he's of kw out your way and he has done some amazing things that um inspire me and inspire his agents 
So I follow him. I follow agents within his group. Okay. And he has podcasts as well. But he shows you the process of how he takes someone who maybe you wouldn't think was a typical agent. And he puts everything into them and keeps them growing. Another person I love is Kevin Vaughn. Kevin Vaughn um, is an agent. And when you talk about inspiring about his photos, amazing. He's um, luxury real estate based out of Miami. But the homes that he's sharing and other agents that he's sharing, most of multi-million dollar um, real estate. But he's a person who is still um, real. He can. Uh, I like that. He engages with you online. So if you're engaging with him or you have questions, he will say things to you. He'll connect with you. I like to connect with real people. I don't yeah. I don't yeah. want to deal with anyone who's just so like over the top that like you can't even connect with them. Another agent that um I love out of California is out of the South Bay area is Chrissy Grasso and she does a little bit something different. Chrissy is um located in california but she's also has relationships and is with dolly lentz up in new york she's really good and then i would follow anyone interior designers locally i yeah, love them yeah. as well tina marie designs is one of my favorites here in orlando i follow um other designers that are here locally but a lot of my connections are business to business too local and also outside of it so it could be anybody from just because they inspire me or they just get up and they work hard every day. Those kind of people I just like to surround myself with literally in real life and online. Right. So what do you think, where do you think it's going? Like where do you think, what do you think is going to happen really with Instagram in the future? What direction? And even social media, what do you think is, where do you think things are going to go? It's, it's funny because it just depends on how people engage. I'm, I'm shocked that Instagram has still continued to have the longevity that it has because most things it's like Facebook. Oh, okay, we get on there. But I think the thing for Instagram is it's more of an internal process. And it's, if you want to be a voyeur, you can be a voyeur. If you want to interact, you can be interact. Because I've had people follow me for years and then they call me up and I'm like, how did you find me? I'm like, what's your name? And I can't even find them on Instagram. And they're like, oh, I don't post anything. I don't talk to anybody. I just watch your page. I said, <laughs> You're like, I'm kind like, of creepy. Like <laughs> exactly. But it allows that person to have it almost as a Google process. And I think that's what's giving it life. Mm. Because people don't have to engage to keep it going. They're just following. And, and it's something about it that engages people. But as far as social media... I think it's not going anywhere. I think it's, it's going to be even more robust because my 10-year-old son kind of teaches me how social media is going to go. Um, and it teaches me different age ranges. My nephew, who's 32 years old, he laughs at the Facebook concept. And I'm like, why do you laugh at Facebook? And he's like, what the heck? Is, I'm not going to put all my business on Facebook. I'm like, you're 30. <laughs> funny how people do all this research on millennials and I'm like are you really talking to these people because they're yeah. in my family and I know their friends and I know my 10 year old who's like Mr. YouTube he doesn't even watch TV he has a, he received the TV for Christmas he doesn't even watch TV anymore so I think it's not so much a social media or online I think we need to be thinking about how we're going to interact with TV next I don't think it'll be around for much longer you know what's funny is, so I have uh, my three youngest sons are 20, 22, and 31. And my 31-year-old is not on social media at all. He goes, I don't have time for that. He has no right. interest in it, at zero, like won't go mm -hmm. on Facebook. He keeps saying, oh, I should get a Facebook page. or oh, You know, and he doesn't. He doesn't do it. My 22-year-old was pretty involved on Facebook for a while, and then he's like, he got bored with it. He's like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. not going to do that. My youngest son was really popular on Twitter. He did a lot of stuff on Twitter for a while. And then he went on to Snapchat. And I'm like, show me Snapchat, Johnny. goes, no, Mom, get off of Snapchat. <laughs> and, and, for, <laughs> and for years, he wouldn't let me follow him on Twitter. You know, he had me blocked and all that. So I had to create a fake profile and stalk him like stalker moms do. And um, so now he finally lets me, like, follow him on Twitter, but he's hardly on there. And he does some stuff on Snapchat. But what's interesting is that I've seen all three of my boys really actually not express that much interest in social media. It, it's it's kind of fascinating to me. 
I'm not quite sure what that means or you know what direction that goes, but I'm I don't know. Like they're all, they're John's on Snapchat quite a bit, so he does some stuff on there. But Jake and Phil, no interest. What? Why don't you ask them how do they find certain places to go to eat out for the evening when they plan a trip with their friends? That's where I think that's more that interesting is a brilliant information. Question. Because that's what the tool is being used for right now. It's kind of superficial when you think about Facebook. Or, oh, my life is great and your life sucks is the concept of Facebook, which I hate. Um, because I want to just uplift people and grow with people who, you know, are fighting the same fight that we are every day. And I don't think certain platforms actually embrace that concept. And I think the kids are becoming jaded and they don't want to hear about the negative stuff. Yeah. They want to hear about positive things. But when it comes time for them to find something, I have even younger kids who find me on Instagram and follow me, and they're like, you remind me of my aunt, or you remind me of my mom. I'm like, I don't know if that's cool or not, but okay, I'll take it. But they refer their parents to me, because they'll have a conversation at home and say, hey, mom, you have to meet this lady that's on Instagram, and she's like, what? So when they call me, it's so funny. But I think they utilize it as a tool to find things, but not so much to engage on a daily basis. So I think that's where the YouTube concept is coming from and people doing shorter YouTubes because kids don't want to interact more than a few seconds now. It used to be a minute and a half. Well, you know what's funny that I find as, I'm, as I create training videos and stuff for a Masterclass Real Estate Academy, you know, I used to do like an hour long or 90 minute videos and stuff like that. And I'm finding, first of all, I won't watch it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm finding that the shorter the better. Even doing 10, 5 to 10 minute quick training clip videos where you can pop in, learn something for a couple minutes yeah. and get out. And I even the other day, this is how pathetic it's getting. I, I had a gal who I love to follow. Marie Forleo is one of my favorite people yeah. on the planet. Love her. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she sends out her weekly, you know, little video. And normally they're like five to seven minutes. And I saw one the other day, it was 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, it's 10 minutes, right? <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> now, she gives incredible content, so it's worth watching the 10 minutes. But I remember thinking, oh, this one's like more than five minutes, so I'm going to have to like set aside 10 minutes to watch it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crazy how, you know, now why I love podcasts is because I put them, my headphones in, I get on the treadmill or I, on my drive, my drives to, when I'm out driving around, I can listen to them as I go. So okay. it doesn't seem to bother me as much in podcasts, but our attention span is getting shorter and shorter. And shorter. Yes, that is a challenge that you have, I think. So when people are really looking for something or like with your podcast, I think they're becoming um, much cooler than they were before. Yeah. It was a chore, but even like you're saying, you want to keep them short because I may be in a car for about 30 minutes and I'm trying to target as much of that as I can before I can get out the car. Exactly. So one last question I had uh, before we finish up today, it has to do with how do you take, how do you take this from online to offline? So again, you've talked about, you've gotten leads and stuff from this. So you've gotten them from the online environment. How do you really take those and convert them to offline so that they continue to work with you? I ask them how they like to interact because I want to know how tech they are or how, you know, traditional they may be. And then I make the adjustment to that. Once we know that they're traditional, hey, how you doing? Well, how do you want to go ahead and find things? Um, I also kind of show them how I've done in the past. They're like, oh, that works great for me. And I give them options on how they want to interact with me and not me force them on how they're going to interact. So have you kind of tracked the leads that come off of Instagram and created like yes. a demographic profile almost? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. you know, like I know that I have a certain age group that follows me, right? Yes. And like I deal a lot in country property, so I have people that are interested in, you know, horses and llamas and goats and stuff like that. But <clears throat> that age difference is, it's about age 30 to 50. Like under 30, they can't afford acreage in most situations, not all. And above 50, they don't want all the work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that's different, and each person needs to identify who yeah. they're actually talking to. I mean, sometimes you could be saying the things that you're interested in, but nobody else really gives a crap about it. So <laughs> initially, I was getting 40 to 50, um, even off of Instagram, but it was more of the Google, because uh. when it first came out, 
they could Google it and then they found me. But now that it's grown, I'm getting between 30 and 35 year olds. Oh, that's and interesting. They, and it's so funny when I read these demographics because I'm also an econom, you know, economist by that's just who I am. So I study the markets and how they interact. So for them coming from different areas, I target people who are relocating to Orlando. I know who I want. I know what type of client I want. So my inbound marketing is like, yes, I hit a home run. I'm doing something right. Or no, I'm not doing this right, and I need to switch gears and re rework it. So here's a key that I, I, I want people to hear is how important it is to track that, right? Yeah. Like, I, I think people, the, the average agent does kind of free willy advertising, right? They kind of just throw anything up on the wall and they don't even know if it sticks or doesn't yeah. stick. They're getting a bill every month until finally they're like, oh, well, I don't think I got anything for it. I'm going to cancel that bill. It's like the vital component that I've heard from you throughout this is that you keep track. You're tracking it. Yes, I am anal when it comes to tracking. So when someone comes to me and they say, oh, social media doesn't work. Oh, 60% of my business for 2016 worked. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So that's a key component. So I hope that people get that on this, this Check your episode. insights on Instagram. They will tell you who's following you, how many people saved your, your post. Every, the 24 hours after the post, I go in to look at that one specific picture. If I didn't get enough comments or interactions, I'm checking out what time I posted, if the content isn't resonating with the consumer, and I'm switching it up. I don't even know there are insights. Where is that at? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even know you could see an insight. I know it on Facebook, but I don't know how to do it on Instagram. Okay, guess what? I'm going to your page right now. First of all, you need to make it become a business page. Yes. I've Once you make one. it become a business page, then you go into the photo itself. Once you go into the photo itself, you go to... You haven't made this a business page because no, it's your not. personal page. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to convert it to a business okay, page. So you have to be a business page, then you can see insights. And then you click in view insights, and it tells you well, this how is many. Kind of my personal page, so I need to make a different business page. I think. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. but okay. you can convert that one because you are a brand yourself. Right. I have all my kids and stuff on here. I don't have all pictures of houses, but yeah, I would, I, no, that's a great idea. So then on insights, you can see how a picture, so can you show me yeah. an example on one of yours? Can you put it up on the, Yeah. Or just like one picture? I'm going to show If you're you. listening on audio, you're going to have to watch us on YouTube to see the video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you this one. I want to show you a good one that they saved it, not okay. my bad one. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys, because I saw this one. Okay, view insight. Okay, this is a good one. Okay. Uh, move it over to the, move it over. There you go. Right here? So, yeah, but I can't really see the insight, so back it up. A oh, there I can see it now. Okay, all right, cool. So you had 152 likes, four comments, four saved, 160 engaged. It reached 556 people, and then scoot it over a little bit. I can't see the, the other way. 751 impressions oh all right okay cool yeah i didn't even know that so that's available on a business page instagram correct and here you click on the next box that says who did what does this mean basically and it explains to you what those things impressions oh, okay I which see. is you know okay. helpful too for marketing number of time. yeah that's a, that's a awesome so the key here you guys is when you're doing marketing you have to understand that it's marketing and there's a method to the madness right you got to track it and you really gotta see what works and what doesn't work so that you can know how to move forward. That's the thing that I love the most about numbers. Now, I failed algebra three times, so I'm not so great at math. But I do understand that numbers don't lie. They tell you what direction to go and what to do. That's the great thing about numbers, right? Yes. Well, any last thoughts you wanna share with our listeners today? No, it was an amazing experience. I just want everybody to know um, if we ever reach out to me, we do a lot of things online, a lot of the Instagram people I work with. Um, we collaborate offline. So we're creating a community of people that really want to benefit and work with each other and help each other. So it's not just about, oh, I'm so famous on online. You know, yeah, let's move yeah. away from that and try to engage with people because people want to talk to you. And if they don't, move on to the next person. Exactly. 
Well, we will be sure to share all of her social media links on the show notes as well as on realestaterealworld.com online. So thank you so much for being with us today, Nicole. You're truly a pleasure. I knew Randy I knew Randy would not disappoint in great, pointing us out to great people. Oh, thank you so much. And I'll have to go ahead and reach out to Randy and give him a big virtual kiss. Exactly. <laughs> He'll be thrilled. And I'll have to get a list of hashtags for you so when we post this on social media, we can try okay. to blow it up, right? <laughs> I will email your assistant. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for listening to us today on Real Estate Real World, where we get to talk to all the fantastic people out there in the real estate industry who are really doing the work, not just talking about it, right? They're the movers and shakers that are changing the industry. So if you love the show, please head on over to iTunes and give us a great review. It helps post push us up in the ratings. You can also listen to us on Podbean and check us out at realestaterealworld.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Nicole, for being here. Great guest as Thank always. Thank you. Awesome. Have a great one. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today on Real Estate Real World, where we talk with masters and leaders in real estate and beyond on how we can raise the bar in our industry. Please subscribe over on iTunes. And while you're there, be sure to give us a review. Your reviews encourage us and help others find our podcast. For show notes and hot topics on what's going on right now in our real estate industry, hop on over to www.realestaterealworld.com and add your name to our email. Thanks again for listening. And go out there. Be a part of the elite masterclass in raising the bar on the real estate industry.